Hello guys, today I'm making a video to explain the fundamentals, the 101 of rear suspension uh, bikes. Uh, I will cover some main concepts of uh, rear suspension design or linkage and these concepts are the leverage ratio and also the shock forces implied in the rear suspension. So, the overall behavior of um, a suspension bike, of the rear suspension bike, is a combination between the shock, the shock forces, and leverage ratio. The shock is a tu tunable, you can fine tune your shock or change your shock. The leverage ratio is an intrinsic property of the frame and you cannot change it. So, this equation shows that uh, the rear suspension force, forces uh, are equal to the shock forces divided by the leverage ratio. So, what is leverage ratio? The leverage ratio is the most important uh, aspect to analyze in a full suspension bike. So, as you can see, here I have um, a simulation of a uh, young talent scapper bike and as you can see um, the rear the rear wheel travel is about 160 millimeters and the shock travel the shock length the stroke is about 63 millimeters so as you can see the wheel moves up and down 160 millimeters while the shock only compresses 63 millimeters so the ratio is not one to one so the leverage ratio is uh, the, 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 the total global leverage ratio is the rear, rear wheel travel dividing by the shock stroke that means that the leverage ratio of this bike on average is 160 millimeters of travel dividing by 63 stroke 2.5 of leverage ratio this means that for for each 2.5 centimeters that the wheel moves on average the shock will compress one centimeter so 2.5 for one but how can this information uh, tell you something about the bike it can't um, it only shows the global average leverage ratio what you need you need to analyze is the instantaneous leverage ratio Wh what is this so basically we saw that the average a global leverage ratio is 2.5 to 1 but this leverage ratio is not constant along the travel it changes at the beginning of the stroke in this particular bike you have a leverage ratio of 3.1 that means that the beginning of the stroke for each 3 centimeters of travel it only compresses one in the shock so the wheel m moves much more than the shock but when you reach the top of the travel you only need two centimeters to compress one centimeter in the shock so the global is 2.5 to 1 but at the beginning of of the the, the travel the ratio is 3 to 1 and at the end it's 2 to 1 that means basically that the bike is a progressive in this case a very prog progressive bike you can you can tell you can tell right away that the leverage ratio is different at the beginning of of the the travel by moving the wheel so as you can see the wheel moves quite a bit and the shock almost almost does not move nothing so as you can see shock is moving very little and the wheel is traveling traveling a lot at the end of the st of the stroke the wheel moves much less and the 
and the, 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 the shock compresses much more. So as you can see, the shock compresses more regarding to the wheel movement when comparing to the beginning of the stroke. Whoa, what a nice leverage ratio there. It's a shame no one is still listening to me. Going back to the original equation, uh, we, 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 I show you that the force needed to compress the rear suspension is a, a ratio between the, the shock forces and the leverage ratio. This means that for higher leverage ratio, you need less force to compress the suspension. And for lower leverage ratio, you need higher force to compress the suspension. Given that, I will next show you three examples of three dis distinct bikes regarding the leverage ratios. So here I just created three examples of three different types of bikes. The re regressive one, linear one and progressive one. They are completely different in the behavior of the, the, real, the rear suspension. Although in this example, they both have a, on average a leverage ratio of two. This one, it increases from one to three. So on average, it has a two of of leverage ratio. This one is linear, is always 2, and this one it decreases from 3 to 1, so on average it has a leverage ratio of 2. Although they have the same uh, average leverage ratio, they are completely different. A regressive bike means that the beginning of the travel is really hard to compress the, 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 the suspension, while it becomes re very easy to compress the suspension of the bike at the end of the travel. This is not an, an ideal ideal bike because the beginning of the travel it will be very harsh and you will bottom out the end of the travel very easy. So on the other spectrum we have the progressive bikes which which are my favorite type of design. In this case uh, you start with a higher leverage ratio so the bike the beginning of the travel is easy uh, to compress so the bike is very subtle to the small bumps and the end of the travel becomes more hard uh, to compress which means that you will have bottom out resistant resistance uh, to drops and hard impacts the linear bike, the leverage ratio maintains constant, so the, the feelings, the behavior of, of the rear suspension are, are the same at the, at the beginning of the, the travel or at the end of the travel. Here I just created a, a table with a simplified categorization of suspension types based on leverage ratio differences. So. Um, this means that uh, you take out in the leverage ratio at the beginning of the travel and you sub subtract the leverage ratio at the end of the travel. If the value is smaller than uh, 0.5 negative, neg negative 0 0.5, this means that this is a regress re regressive bike. If the values uh, are between uh, 0 0.5 negative and plus 0 0.5, the bike is considered a linear bike. If the values are bigger than 0.5, the bike is a progressive bike. And if the values are bigger than 1, is a super progressive bike. This is a simplified version, a rule of thumb. Going back to the initial equation for the last time, uh, now that you, you know that the rear suspension behavior is a compromise between the shock forces and leverage ratio, and then, since you already know what leverage ratio is, uh, I, I will end up this video explaining a little bit the types of shocks and the, the shock forces. There are two main, two main types of shocks, the coil shocks and the hair shocks.
Within the air shocks, we have the small volume air shocks and the large volume air shocks. The coil shock is typically a linear shock. The small volume air shock is a progressive shock. The large volume air shock is a mix between the two shocks. In this graph, we have represented the, the shock force uh, along the, the shock uh, stroke or travel. This is for air shocks, as an, and you can see the, the, the spring curve of an air shock is, uh, is quite progressive, is an exponential, exponential curve. The red line indicates a shock with a small volume, while the yellow line indicates a, a shock with a bigger volume. So as you can see, small volume shocks are more progressive than large air volume shocks. The, the coil shock um, spring curve uh, is a straight line, so it's quite identical to the yellow line, and it does not ramp up as the low volume air shock. Now, to finalize this video, here I just show you a final outcome of suspension behavior for different types of leverage ratios and shocks. So in this column we have the three different types of leverage ratio, the regressive, linear and progressive uh, leverage ratio. Here we have the two types of shock and the final outcome. For the coil shocks, since they are uh, linear shocks, they, they do not um, change the final outcome of the leverage ratio. So a regressive bike with a coil shock the final outcome is always regressive. A linear leverage ratio with a coil shock is always linear and progressive with coil is always progressive. For the air shocks, given that the air shocks are by nature progressive, especially the low volume air shocks, uh, this means that a regressive uh, frame with combined with an air shock it, it will give you uh, a linear a linear bike as a final outcome so it kind of compensates and corrects for the regressiveness of, of the frame a linear uh, a linear frame with a <coughs> air shock it will, it will give you a slightly progressive bike and the progressive bike with an air shock it will give you a very progressive bike i really hope that you enjoyed this video and learned something new today uh, please subscribe to my channel to to see my my future videos and meanwhile give a look to my previous ones bye